Think you could teach me how? I guess no one told you the rules. What rules? Academy kids ski. Public schoolers bored. It's been that way since snowboards were invented. Good luck, Sky. Keep your tips up. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, keep your tits up. <laughs> tits up. Tits up. Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Welcome to D Commentaries. <gasps> Thank you. Welcome to you and welcome to our listeners. Today, we're talking about Johnny Tsunami. But before we talk about Johnny and his tsunami, uh, I want to cover a few little bits of housekeeping. First of all, if you're a new listener, welcome. Hi. I think we got a few new listeners from our mention. At least one. Yeah, in the skim, I know there was someone on, on Instagram who said that they were following this us. This is for you. Yes, thank you. No, I think we actually got a few people because our download numbers went up quite a bit. Yay! So thank you all so much. Uh, we hope you're still with us and that you're enjoying what you hear. Thank you so much for giving us a shot. And if you like what you hear, uh, please uh, leave a review. Tell some more friends. Spread the word. You know, we, uh, we want to reach as many people as we can. Because, you know, it's fun for us and it's even more fun if we have more people to have fun with. Yeah. Val's parents pay me um, to do this with her. So it's cool and fun. <laughs> it's true. I have no friends <laughs> that are unpaid. <laughs> All my friends <laughs> are paid interns. Speaking of reaching people, uh, we are going to have a TikTok. Ooh. Uh, barring a catastrophe, it will be at Decommentaries. Uh, we haven't made it yet, but we are going to. So stay okay, tuned. Let's do that soon so someone for, else doesn't do it. <laughs> for our TikTok. Oh, no. Don't do it. Don't do it, trolls. I also just wanted to mention, uh, we always mention it at the end of the podcast, but I know that some people don't listen to the credits at the end. No shade. But just in case, I wanted to remind everyone that we are a part of the Trident Network. And the Trident Network is a three-pronged network get it? Three Bronx, try it. And the network has videos, like filmed videos on our YouTube channel. We have like both short sketches right now and then um, some web series content coming soon. We have live shows on our Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Trident Network, mostly right now on Wednesdays and Thursdays, but more coming Fridays and other times. Uh, and then, of course, we have a bunch of other podcasts that, you know, I highly recommend we got a shout out on the tournament podcast uh, recently, so I would like to return the favor and recommend that you um, go and listen to the tournament podcast. They do bracket tournaments of things that are not tournament <laughs> tournament fodder normally, uh, and they have a lot of fun. This week they're doing Chicago things. Last week they did Pixar, and we're going to do a crossover episode with them in November uh, when we get to 16 16- uh, movies because then we'll have a 16 seed tournament so stay tuned for that in a couple months also the trident network has a patreon because what we do what we're doing here is trying to provide a platform for people like Allie and myself but also for all the other people who are on trident to make cool stuff um and in order to continue to do that we would appreciate so much um any amount of support that you would be willing to give the easiest best way to do that is on our patreon it which is i believe patreon.com slash the trident network you can give a, as little or as much as you want. And if you give a certain amount, I think we give you a shout out on the podcast. So if you want us to say hello to you in one of our upcoming episodes, give us some cash. Also, you can buy merch. We have merch now Woo! specific to D commentaries. So listen to the episodes so that you understand the jokes and then buy some fun merch so that you everyone knows you went to our bot mitzvah. Okay, that is plenty of housekeeping. Let's get to the fun part. Yay! Now, Val, before we start, I have to cut you off. Because uh -oh. everyone knows you always we always do the intro, and then you always just jump right into the synopsis, okay? Okay. I have to stab you. And now everyone, Val does not know why I'm doing this right now. Uh-oh. So, friends of the pod, you know at the end of every episode, we play a game. Now, this game uh, it today is going to be played throughout. 
<laughs> the uh, throughout the the recording of the podcast. Okay. Um, and so I did ask Val to grab a beverage. Val, what are you drinking today? I am drinking Fever Tree Premium Ginger Beer. Nice. Is there alcohol in it? Uh, I think so. Nice. All right. Val, ask me what I'm drinking. What are you drinking? I am drinking Peach Bellini from Trader Joe's, $5.99. Cannot wow. recommend this enough. In my Adventureland wine glass. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, Val, today's game, if you could not tell, is a drinking game. <laughs> And every time we hear the words Johnny or Tsunami. Oh, my God. We have to take a sip of our drink. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I have taken a tally. You have since said Johnny Tsunami three times. We have to take three sips before we get started. And I just said it. So five sips. <laughs> I'm going to have to get more than one drink, I think. That'll be great. I'm going to play. I'm planning on having a whole bottle. <laughs> Once again, cannot, I cannot recommend Trader Joe's five ninety nine Peach Bellini. No, it's in the wine section. But also, if you're not a drinker, you can absolutely play this game along with us with a LaCroix or any other drink of your choice. Oh, yeah, please do. Um, and then just let us know how we did by the end if we're still uh, coherent in our thoughts. <laughs> I did. Well, I do want everyone to know I did ask Val before playing this game if she was currently drinking right now. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that Val also was uh, drinking before I did confirm yes. to play Allie this game. is a thoughtful and kind person who was wow. looking Wait, out for me. Can, as can she you say that does. one more time? I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put that in my Allie affirmations. <laughs> is a thoughtful and kind person. And kind yeah, you need to say that to and yourself. Very humble. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Val, I'm going to throw it back to you to throw <laughs> us our synopsis and all of that good stuff for the beginning of the pod. All right. Uh, so Johnny Tsunami drink. <laughs> we don't have to say drink every time I'm taking a tally, but Val and I will keep okay. ourselves accountable. Uh huh. Um, came out July 24th, 1999. So as I mentioned last episode, we are definitely in the era of once a month decoms. This was like the heyday of decoms. So Smart House came out in June. This one came out in July and so on and so forth. So Johnny Tsunami <laughs> was uh, directed. I am going to be so in my head about this <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> it's OK. I got you. OK. Um, just was, keep saying it. You just keep saying okay. it. OK. Uh, was directed by Steve Boyum, who also directed Stepsister from Planet Weird and Motocross. Oh, that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. And it was written by Doug Sloan and Ann Austin, who also together wrote Motocross. So we've got like the Motocross team. Motocross over. Um, oh. oh. Uh, so, yeah. So we've got this like Motocross uh, team and the. I believe that's all of the decoms that Doug Sloan and Ann Austin wrote. So it's interesting that they had the same director writer combo for just these two yeah. movies. But they do kind of feel similar in some ways, like to Motocross. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it. Is was Motocross one of the ones you watched over the pan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I haven't seen that, so I can't really compare as probably well as you okay. Can. You haven't seen it ever, or you just haven't seen it since like, since it came okay. out. <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. Or like a two years after it came out. Right, right. Okay, we've got a big cast here. Big cast, um, let's hear it. <clears throat> All right, Brandon Baker as Johnny Kapahala, Yuji Okumoto as Pete, or his dad, Mary Page Keller as Mel, or his mom, Carrie Hiroyuki Tagawa as Johnny Tsunami, or Grandpa, Lee Thompson Young as Sam, a.k.a. Jet Jackson, Kirsten Storms as Ooh. Emily, Zachary Bostrom as Brett, the jerk, uh, Gregory Itson as the Headmaster Pritchard, um, no, a.k.a. Emily's dad, Silk Cozart, Kilk, Silk, it's spelled C-Y-L-K, as uh, Sam's dad, Sarge, and Steve Van Wormer as Randy and Ronnie. Oh, yeah. That Randy and Ronnie thing. <laughs> I mean, it took me till the end. 
Oh, it really? It took me until the end. I heard him say the comment of, you look like someone I know. And I was so confused. <laughs> I was so confused. This was one of the ones that I watched during the beginning of the pandemic. So I can't say whether or not I noticed it. Like, I knew it was coming. Yeah. So I, I noticed it. But, like, I can't remember. I don't know. But they're really funny. I, well, he is very funny. Yes, I, I thought it was... F- all I fault. It was wonderfully <laughs> cast. <laughs> yes. Very good yes. cast. Okay. We have an exceptionally long synopsis. Here we go. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Let, wait, let me pick up my drink. Okay, I'm ready. Young Hawaiian surfer Johnny Kapahala gets a rude awakening when his dad relocates to Vermont, a state seriously lacking in waves. There, he struggles to fit in at a private school where everyone skis. Luckily for Johnny, he meets public school student Sam, who instructs him in the art of snowboarding. And when a rivalry brews between Johnny and snooty skier Brett, they decide to settle their rivalry on the slopes. So basically, we don't need to do the synopsis uh, from Allie because. Yeah, because that was literally (laughs) the entire movie. (laughs) I can't figure out why all of a sudden, like I pulled the synopsis from the same place every single time. Where do you pull it from? I Google. And then the th- first thing that pops up on oh, the okay. side, I grab. Okay. Um, so theoretically, this is coming from the same place. I don't know that for 100% sure, but like, I think it's always coming from the same place. So I can't yeah. figure out why some of them are like really long and overly detailed. And then some of them are like a one sentence. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like it really should have stopped after that, like relocated to Vermont. Right. Yeah. Also, that's kind of incorrect. Like when it says his dad relocates to Vermont. No, his dad relocates the family to Vermont. But yeah, whatever. Wow. Another dad I'm about to roll my eyes at. I know. Oh Add my it God. to the list of dads I hate. Uh, I am 100 percent in agreement with you on this. dad. I knew that was coming this time. Ugh. yeah. So, Al. Yeah. What were your first impressions? Thanks, Val. My first impressions were, I, I'm going to give this movie a 7 out of 10. Okay. I thought it was a good movie. I don't know that it's the best Disney Channel original movie out there. Um, overall, thought it was a great movie. Thought it was really fun. It got really deep at times. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did think that there was a lot of fluff. And I think that's why I gave it a 7 instead of a little bit higher. Because there was just a lot of fluff that I'm like, okay, let's like keep moving. Like None of these things are important to the plot line or it's just taking too long to get to the point. But I liked it. And I mean, it's very... <sighs> that dad! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know he wow. sucks so much. Yeah. Val, what were your first impressions? Well, as I just mentioned, I had just recently seen this one. And the reason that I watched it is because it is one of my favorites. Oh, OK. Yeah. And I think it still holds up like I enjoy it. I the one thing I will say is of my like favorites, the acting is the worst in this movie out of all of them, at least I that think I the can only remember. person who does really good. Well, there's two. I think it's Jet Jackson and the yeah. grandpa do great. I think they're yeah, the they're two great. standouts for sure. Yes. Yes. But like, I'm sorry, Brandon Baker. He is like the worst actor ever. Like, it's literally like oh if you God. handed we follow him on Instagram. Val, you oh, no, that. I'm so sorry. You can't uh, say that. He's going to know. He's going to listen. <laughs> He's going to know. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, he's I'm sure he's such a nice person and he's, you know, charming. And there are moments that I really like of his acting. But I there were just so many moments where it was like, like it reminded me of when you hand someone a script and they're like cold reading lines. Oh, don't I know that? Like the back of my hand. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like I it, like the emotions were off or like there was a delay, like the, mm-hmm. like the reaction to someone else, what someone else was saying was like delayed. Oh. Oh. Um, yeah. Like just stuff like that. Um, yeah. like you could, and this is also to some degree, the editor's fault. Like you could sometimes see where like he'd been like cued into action. Um, you know what I mean? Like, like he just started moving towards yes. whoever he was talking to or whatever. And so like that made it feel stilted too. And that's not his fault entirely. That's the editor's fault. Um, but yeah, so there was just stuff like that. And I also, I, you know, I wonder also if it's a, a directing issue, um, because mm-hmm. like I look at someone like 
Kirsten Storms, who was so dynamic in Xenon and then is kind of just this flat, like stilted character in this movie. Yeah. Who I wonder oftentimes why she's even there. Yeah. It's, it's Yeah. And like, <laughs> I don't understand how I can go from like loving how how great she is in Xenon to that. Like, you know, like that's that's crazy. So it's either a writing issue, a directing issue or I guess an acting issue. But like when it's the same person, it's harder to believe that. Right. So I'm willing to give all of them, including Brandon Baker, the benefit of the doubt that at least some of it is a directing and a writing problem. Um, but either way, like that's probably my biggest complaint with the movie. Otherwise, like I like the story a lot. I, I think the message is good. Like I love ski snowboard movies because like I'm I grew up a skier and a, a wannabe snowboarder. And wow. um, yeah, I'm wearing my I'm wearing my ski shirt. My nice. Ski shirt. Yeah. I'm wearing my Hawaiian shirt. Yes. Um, we're both festive for today. So, yeah. So like I love like I like I watched out cold all the time when I was growing up. So uh, I just love any movie that plays like fastball while people are like while there's wide shots of people snowboarding or skiing down a hill. So uh, I enjoyed this for that reason. I think the movie really like starts when Sam shows up because like. Oh, Lee Thompson sure. Young is just such a great actor. He's so dynamic and fun to watch. And, yeah. and uh, so that's that's like he's he makes the movie for me. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's that's sort of where I fell on it. Like, I definitely enjoyed it, but the acting was not as good as some of the other ones we've seen. Also, I'm like not 100 percent sure there is alcohol in this ginger beer now that I'm like really. Yeah, Val, I don't think that there's alcohol in the ginger it. beer. <laughs> well, I can go get an alcoholic beverage if you want no, it's me to. Okay. Um, it's fine. Okay. I'll just be tipsy by the end of this and I'll sleep <laughs> no. real good tonight. <laughs> I think there's some PBRs nearby. I can Whoa, grab one. OK, improv. <laughs> I know, right? No, only if I also have a Malort shot. Hold on one second. OK. OK. All right, Val, what are you drinking now? I'm drinking a Paps Blue Ribbon, also Ooh. known as PBR. Nice. The drink of choice for improvisers everywhere, or at least in Chicago. And D commentaries. Sponsor us. PBR. <laughs> and yeah. Trader Joe's. Sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. They'll definitely sponsor us. Um, okay. So Al, yeah. do you have any uh did you have any favorite quotes? Um I had a few. I you know, Val, I have found that I'm really bad at writing them down. That's fine. At least from my perspective, there weren't that many quotes in this one. Yeah, there were some. The ones that I did like were, um, I don't know what prompted these words, but it was slamming totally nectar. Yeah. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> and then he said something along the lines of going Richter. And then the the minion of Brett, the, the evil man, said, hey, Brett, how do you go Richter? <laughs> and I, I don't know what going Richter means either. I think it basically just means like getting wrecked, like just like getting destroyed by a wave, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really write down many quotes. I did write down his, he says to his grandpa, you know, I don't want to go or something. And then his grandpa says, talking about that metal, he's like, you got to come back for this. And I don't think they give them out for surfing the internet. <laughs> Which I just thought was cute. That is cute. And then like, I think that, the thing that I did like about Johnny in general, and this quote that I'm about to say sort of exemplifies this, is like he gives it to people like he he gives it back to, you know, Brett and his cronies when they kind of give him a hard time. But mm -hmm. he doesn't do it in like a mean way. Like he's not quick witted. He yeah. doesn't lean on that. He just sort of is like himself. He's nice about it. Yeah. yeah, he's just sort of himself. So like the first thing I think that Brett ever says to him or about him is like Brett goes, what planet did he beam down from? And then Johnny's like, Hawaii, bro. It's and it's a state, not a planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just sort of like, you know, like just sort of pointing out like, hey, I heard you. I get it. You're going to bully me. Cool. I'm not really here for it. You know, like that kind of thing. I, I like that because that's in character, right? Like he's not the type of person to be really snarky or really quick witted. He's just sort yeah. of earnest. So I thought that was that was like a good example of that. 
Uh, the only other thing I'll point out is that um, Sam calls his dad Sarge, which I just thought was really yeah. cute. <laughs> that is cute. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Not really many, if any, quotes. Yeah, to speak I did of. have one that like pulled at my heartstrings, which happened very early on in the movie of it's never easy to deliver news, you know, is going to break someone's heart. Yeah. Mom coming in with all the honesty. Mom is bad. Bad? Mom is a badass bitch. <laughs> yeah, mom is like basically telling dad how stupid he is the entire not stupid, but like she's no, he's she stupid. like calls him out a lot, which I appreciate. Although honestly, if I were her, I would have like left him. Okay, like, I, I have would a not- whole <laughs> monologue about <laughs> that <laughs> marriage. That. <laughs> yeah. And then the another cute one, I guess, is um when he, when Johnny and, and Johnny are talking about, uh, you know, him leaving. <laughs> yes, I know. I will drink. Um, I, he says, I really don't want to go, Grandpa. And then uh, Grandpa says, you know, when you were born, your mom and pop named you Johnny, but I named you Pono. You know why? He says, because it means goodness. He says, exactly. And no matter what, you always seem to find the good in everything. Which Aww. I just thought was really sweet. Yeah, Grandpa hits. I know he, was he is great. a hip hop hippie to the hip hip hop. You don't stop the do, <laughs> do the, the dang dang booty to the bump jump the Judy. <laughs> Any other quotes or thoughts before we head on in? Um, no. Okay. It's May on a mountaintop. The sun is shining, uh, and we can ski naked because it's hot <laughs> enough outside to do so. And this is a thing that people actually do. Well, maybe not naked, but in bikinis. We took our jackets off. There's nothing underneath. And we're going downhill. <laughs> downhill. So literally and figuratively. We're, slip, <laughs> we're slipping, sliding right into Spoiler City. Our tops <laughs> are off. On the hill. Into the ski boots. Mm-hmm. Into the snowboarding boots. <laughs> okay. Val is dancing with her top off in Spoiler City. Um, Have we dancing. arrived? We are arrived. Lights up on a beach. In Hawaii. Johnny Kapahala is there surfing. He is an all-star surfer in Hawaii. And his famous grandpa, Johnny Tsunami, was once a famous uh, surfer in Hawaii as well. So he's kind of taking um, taking tips and tricks and all of those good things from his grandpa. He wants to become his grandpa, basically. Um, his mom is super supportive of him. His dad is not. His dad is the son of Johnny Tsunami, the grandpa. And he has this weird relationship with his dad. And so then he then in turn has a weird relationship with his son. So he's really frustrated that his son isn't focusing on school. And so what does he do? He uproots the family and moves away from surfing, which is young Johnny Kapahala. His dream uh, is to be a surfer, kind of like his grandpa was. So he uproots the family. They move to Vermont. And as we all know, there is no surfing in Vermont. Um, And so his dad was a computer guy. Computers were just becoming a thing in the 90s. And so they moved to Vermont so that his dad could work at a private school as the computer guy. And then Johnny then in turn goes to this private school. Um, It's a new world for him. He's wearing uniforms for the first time. He can't wear his Hawaiian shirt. Um, He's learning how to, you know, be in the cold. He didn't even bring a jacket when they got off the plane. Um, He meets some new friends and they try to teach him how to ski and they they do really bad. And by friends, I mean enemies. It ends up being the school bully. And he actually doesn't really let it get to him too bad. He kind of just like brushes it off and is like, you suck, Brett. And then Johnny ends up taking the bus home and then uh, the snowboarders come on the bus and they're like, whoa, what do you do? And that's where we get Sam, our Jet Jackson uh, friend, who ends up telling him that he's a snowboarder and that the the public school kids snowboard and the private school kids ski. So that's why they he's never really seen a snowboarder. And he was like, wait, no, I want to do that. That's closer to surfing. So then Sam ends up teaching him how to snowboard. And then the him and his dad keep you know getting in little spurts of not liking each other through out. And then we find out that the girl he's kind of interested in, Kirsten Storms, um, is the daughter of the principal of this private school. And on the mountain, uh, the skiers are coming to say their beef. They're coming to... Well, the, the mountain is split in half. 
And oh, only, yeah, yeah. the snowboarders are only allowed on one half and the, it's the shittier half. And so the skiers are like, um, excuse me. Hello. Knock, knock, knock. What are you doing? Snowboarders on our side of the mountain. Snowboarders are like, you know what? It's a mountain. It's nature. We're just going to we're going to share it. OK. And the skiers are like, Mm-mm-mm. and so then Brett starts to punch the crip crap out of Johnny Tsunami. And well, he Johnny, beats him up because of what happens to Emily. Remember? Oh, oh, I missed a whole part. So Emily is kind of interested in Johnny as he is kind of interested in her. And so she puts on all black and goes over to the (laughs) snowboard side to learn how to snowboard because he kind of like dares her. Yeah. Um, And so she comes and learns and she gets overconfident and like almost dies, basically. Yeah. And that was actually kind of horrifying where they had them like hanging on the side of this mountain. Cliff. Granted, I know yeah. they were probably laying on a floor with some sponge right. rocks around them. But right. from the way that they made it look in the editing, they made it look like they were hanging on the side of a mountain. Yeah, for real. So they, so Brett like beats him up because he's like, I don't know, defending her honor. Or like he's pissed at him for overstepping. Yeah. And so then um, Johnny then gets in trouble with the school because uh, his, th- her, Emily's dad was like, what is this fight for? What? Did, and he was like, no, like they started it. I swear I didn't do anything. And I mean, you you watch the footage. OK, Brett started it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was not Johnny. And then his dad is really mad and he's really upset. But then we come home and he's about to get reamed. And Sam is sitting there. Now, Sam's dad is in the army and Sam's like, can I have five minutes? And mom is like, yeah, you can have five minutes. Go away, asshole dad. (laughs) And um, so then Sam then tells Johnny, he's like, oh, my dad, you know, told me we were going to stay here for a long time. But but he's relocating us again. And so what do Johnny and Sam do? They relocate themselves. They run away in love. Um, all the way back to Hawaii to go back with grandpa. And they, I, I have the thought of like, how did they do this? And then they said it out loud and I'm glad they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, they used Sam's dad, comma Sarge, his like army ness to get on. Like, they an hopped army on plane. a military transport on the base, which would never actually work, but it's a, no. it's a fun. And idea. then when <laughs> they're on the beach, they're like carrying their stuff on the beach, like back to yeah. grandpa's house. And it's like, no, you'd be coming up from a driveway. Like, you're not going to be right. walking on the beach next to the water with your suitcase. <laughs> That's the things I worry about in, t- in TV movies. Um, yes. Yeah, so they arrive on the beach. They see grandpa. Grandpa, you know, takes them in with his open arms and hands, um, you know, calls mom and dad and says they're fine. Dad is pissed. Grandpa's like, I'm actually super proud of them. And after staying there for a few days, um, Johnny ends up realizing, like, on his own, yeah, I got to go back. You know, I, I have to, you know, do what I'm my family's doing and do what's right for for myself. Um, I can't stay here with just you and, you know, live this life. Granted, he still wants to be able to, like, be a kid. But he just realized that, like, the best decision is to go back home, mm-hmm. home com- Vermont. And so what happens when they get back home, Val? I forget. So they get home, but grandpa comes with them. Mm hmm. And so dad is kind of like, uh, you know, he's ready to just sort of ream out little Johnny. But then he sees big Johnny who throws everything off. And then there's like a series of like four different deep conversations between different pairs of people. Yeah. That all kind of help mostly are meant for dad to become a better person. And then which uh, I can't just what does not happen within a 90 minute movie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Mm-mm. not even a made for tv movie that's all about that nope. um and then uh grandpa goes snowboarding and he's somehow incredible at snowboarding of course just like instantly and then they are confronted by brett mm-hmm. and little johnny suggests the competition to say you know if i win everyone gets to be wherever they want to be Um, But Brett's sort of like, well, why would I do that? Because if I win, it's just the way it is now. So why would I even bother? And so then Grandpa sweetens the pot and pulls out his medal of bravery that he got for when he saved those people and says the winner also gets this. So then Brett's like, ooh, trophy. okay. so then they have this race 
And by this point, dad has come around. And so he's there too with everyone. And one thing that I noticed on this watch that I had literally never noticed before is that all the urchins, which urchins are what the public school kids are called, all the urchins when they show up are wearing Hawaiian shirts. And I never noticed that oh, until this watch. I don't know if I noticed watch. that. Yeah. And then I looked even more closely and mom, dad, grandpa, everybody are wearing Hawaiian shirts oh. that are like rooting for Johnny, which is so sweet. And Sam shows up, even though he was supposed to be already gone, his dad let him stay so that he could support his friend. Yeah. And then even though Brett cheats do you want me to keep going or do you want to No, i was gonna mention at some point that i always have you take over for about the last quarter of the movie because <laughs> i'm incapable of remembering what happens and if you listen back to all the synopsi you will realize that i'm like take it away val <laughs> because i do well, not I'm, remember <laughs> well i'm happy to get us over the finish line uh, so um so yeah so so the race begins brett of course cheats but johnny still wins fair and square cheating. he kind of cheats like how um in brink yeah very similar it's a very similar competition to resolve solution very similar um yeah he's like pushing him and trying to trip him and all this stuff and he does push him like right at the top but he also is like attempting to and then he ultimately kind of falls because he is trying to like get him i think Mm -hmm. but either way he falls right before the finish line and then johnny wins um and everyone's happy and then Like the weirdest thing is that like, so Brett's still being kind of a dick. And then Emily is sort of his, you know, who's the, who's Kirsten Storms is like, dude, like he won, like stop, like get over it. Yeah. Um, and then his friend who has been his sidekick the whole time is all of a sudden like, yeah, I'm on Johnny's side. And it then was so it, random. And then he's like hugging him. Like he's in the group hug with like Johnny and, and he Emily like hugs and grandpa. Him first. Yeah, it's so weird. I'm like, this is not earned. This is not the same as like in Brink where that one guy was on their side yeah. from like the His middle of JP the movie. or something. Something. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Boomer. Was. Boomer. It was Boomer. 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 Yeah. So like Boomer, you know, you could see why like he he changed course much Instantly, earlier. Yeah. Yeah. This was just sort of like suddenly this guy is just like totally fine. So that was super weird. But then <laughs> then at the very end, um, the dad is like, we're having a party at our house and everyone's invited. <laughs> So then they have this luau party in their backyard in the middle of winter. And they sort of they offer his parents say to him, you can if you want, you can go back and spend the rest of the school year in Hawaii with your grandpa. And he's like, no, you know what? I think I'll stay. I like it here. So uh, then he gets to dance awkwardly with Kirsten Storms. And another thing that I only noticed upon this watching was you can see in the very bottom, right as they're like panning out in the last shot, um, Brett and his friend are like learning how to do the urchins like high five um, from the urchins. And Brett is at the party, which I never noticed before. Um, so even Brett came around in the end. Wow. Brett and dad both suck. Both come around. <laughs> right. Wow. Thanks for finishing that off, Val. Maybe Anytime. one of these days I'll remember the whole movie. Um, and then, Val, I really do want to talk about the dad. Uh, yes. I don't know that we need to talk about it for a very long time. We've already given him some shit. I don't think it has anything to do with the, him as a human being. I'm sure he's great. Yeah. The writing of the dad was awful. And the fact that his wife chooses every day to stay with him and has not yet mm-hmm. left him. Here is why I think that she stayed with him up to that point where she sort she's of attracted had to his that. dad, the Johnny Tsunami grandpa. No, although oh. that could be possible. Um, she was he flirty with him. Yeah, and he, I mean, he could get it. Like, I mm. definitely could see it. Oh my but, God, he, um, <laughs> he was one of those guys who was just like hot by nature of just his personality yeah. alone. Like, he was just like, like so suave. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think here's what I think. And it's basically what the crux of their ultimate fight is about, which is that he hasn't always been like this. So I think that at some point he decided that the only way that he could kind of support his family and like be a good dad was to give up 
fun and become a square. And he got so stuck in that that he started to like resent his dad, probably to some degree because he was jealous whether oh, or not he realized sure. it, right? Because his dad is having fun. His, for- his son likes his dad more than he likes him. Yeah. And so it just sort of became this trap that he'd created for himself where he was like stuck in this loop of being this horrible person yeah and like hating his dad and thus kind of by extension like hating his son because like his son was so much like his dad and he constantly pointed that out that's essentially what she says to him she's like i can't watch you strip our son of the same joy you used to have like she says to him she's like you used to be so fun and have such a joy about life. And then it went away. Um, So I think that's why she's still with him. But I think that if he had not changed and this was like a, not a (laughs) television movie, I think that she would have left him. Like, I think, you know what I'm saying? Like in a different type of movie, I want to watch that that would have been the end of their marriage. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I want to watch that movie. Yeah, so that's definitely, I think, what happened there. But he is, he sucks. Yeah, and I mean, for, for friends who are listening and, and not going to rewatch the movie, I mean, it, it it's very condescending. It's very, all of your decisions are bad for you. It's like, j- nothing Johnny did was right, where I'll give Brink Dad a little bit of grace here of he was really trying to connect with his son and be like, this is why I'm saying these things. This is why I'm doing this. And and Johnny Tsunami Dad just, I mean, there was no sympathy there. Oh, man, it was it was sad. Uh, I also something just occurred to me. So another thing that I wanted to talk about, and now I'm realizing how connected these two things are. So like this is a movie about like classism and like socioeconomic. Oh, for sure. Divides. Yeah, because it's the public kids and the private kids. Yeah. And it's like so blatant. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, it's so, like literally they're not allowed on one side of the mountain. Oh, and for sure. They call them urchins. I mean, they're just and yeah. Brett, like I, I honestly don't think that a movie today, even though it had nothing specifically to do with race, I don't think that the way Brett talked to Sam could happen in a movie. Oh, today. absolutely not. No. Yeah, I, I mean, Johnny is also a person of color. Right. He's and, talking and down to the two people of color in the movie. Literally the two people of color. Yeah. And that stood out to me. The fact that they kind of find each other and connect. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, it's because they're the only two people in this entire place right. who are people of color. They have things in common and they are inherently outsiders in their worlds. Like even Sam, I mean, he's a little bit more comfortable in this world, but he's also a black kid in Vermont. Like I can't imagine that there are that many of them. Right. So like, yeah, even in Hawaii, Johnny's three friends are white dudes, which also I feel like is not super realistic. I'm not 100% sure, but of the exact demographics of Hawaii, but pretty sure that's not super common. But anyway, what I realize now thinking about this is that, the dad in, in in his sort of effort to um, distance in, himself from his dad, he's also trying to like fit in. Mm-hmm. Like he's also trying to like assimilate almost into like white upper class yeah. society. Right. And and that's part of why he resents everything about what his dad does. And he wants he doesn't want Johnny to surf or do anything Hawaiian. Um, you know, mm-hmm. he wants him to go to this hoity toity school and blah, blah, blah and fit in. Right. He wants him yeah. to fit in. He keeps saying that. And when the principal at the towards the end is like those kids will never have the opportunities that you will. It doesn't mean that it's right or or anything like that. But that's the reality of it. That, I mean, it was so blatant. I mean, it was it was accurate yeah. and it still is accurate. But it was I'm realizing now that there's so much about race and culture wrapped up in this as well yeah. as like the socioeconomics, because like. The dad was essentially trying to pretend that he wasn't a person of color, right? And he was trying to, like, make his son do the same thing. And that is that is something that happens. And I feel like that is something that's very um, kind of common in the, of that era. I, I only feel like I can relate at all because, like, my mom is an immigrant and I sort of feel that pressure sometimes that she wants that for me. Like, mm-hmm. that she wants me to kind of, like, fit in and, like, do 
the right thing or like the the sort of common thing. Like it really bothers her what I'm doing right now. <laughs> the fact that I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a creative like really makes her uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and I think it's kind of that similar thing where it's just like like it's easier I guess to yeah. fit in but like John like the whole I guess moral of this story is that like you don't have to change who you are to like fit right like you can make yourself fit wherever by being yourself and being a good person to oh my people. god Val <laughs> that was beautiful hey it's not me it's Johnny <laughs> <laughs> drink all right day commentaries bingo all right val i feel like i always start you start okay here we go one hit wonder oh yeah really oh yeah that last song what's the last song the the way by fastball fastball is not a one hit wonder i've never heard of fastball except for that song there are like at least 10 pretty well-known fastball songs first what? of all there was there were two fastball songs in brink there are three fastball songs in this movie, and I can name at least two other ones that I like that I that are pretty well known. All right. So. <laughs> so not a one. Sorry. I delete that. Sorry, pal. <sighs> Breaking the fourth wall or looking into the camera. <laughs> At least mad at me, so we must have lost bingo. Um, I don't think so. No, I didn't, I didn't see, see any. any. Okay. Holiday themed. Nope. Holiday in the sun themed. Am I right? <laughs> All of those Mary Kate and Ashley fans? <laughs> That's our next uh, podcast. Oh my gosh, please. <laughs> please. Clunky metaphor. I mean, I think I kind of already talked about yeah, it. Yeah, we, we breezed. Yeah, the, the divided hill is the divided society, period. Whoa, that was Val. You are are on it with the words today. <laughs> she says as she is not on it with the words. Uh, uh, parents who just don't get it. Well, yeah, so much. I don't want to rehash my feelings. Yeah, poster boy, right there for that. Mm -hmm. For that square. I feel like there's a spectrum of parents who just don't get it. Zaddy is on one end. Oh, Zaddy! Mm -hmm. Hey, baby. And Pete Cabahala is on the very other end. Yeah. Cool non-parent adult. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. The uh, coolest the slash hottest <laughs> slash nonest parent adult. <laughs> okay. Okay, people. Zampa. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, I've had too much beach <laughs> Um. Okay, where are we? Someone too famous for a TV movie. No. Okay, but we're not going to count Grandpa. He was, like, busy up till then. He was busy, but he wasn't famous. They were all okay. kind of... They're all character actors. They've all basically been working constantly the entire okay. their entire careers. Sorry, pal. Competition to resolve central problem. Uh, I mean, yeah. I marked it only because there was a competition <laughs> at the very end, at the climax of the movie. To resolve but the central problem. I, I don't know if it resolved the central problem. Yeah, it did. did it, it brought the two sides of the hill back together and everyone was friends doing the high five at the oh, end. Oh, yeah. And then they're almost kissing in the backyard. Yep. Uh, montage sequence. There were three to four. I noticed it this time. Proud of me, Val. I'm so I'm always proud of you. <laughs> Just like cool mom. Cool mom. Cliche villains. I mean, multiple, another, yeah, high school, school bully, bully and yeah, dad and dad. Yeah. Dads are yeah. villains. <laughs> yeah, he is kind of the villain. Yeah, for sure. Also, uh, again, um, in it's institutional inequality is also a cliche <laughs> villain. <laughs> Can confirm. All right, <laughs> uh, okay. Clothes or item that you owned? Me. Oh, okay, great. Did you have one too? No, I was going to do kind of a stretch one. I so I was skiing like when this, you know, this era when those like crazy hats were in style. Uh -huh. So I had like a crazy hat, but it wasn't exactly like the one that Sam mm -hmm. wears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'll yeah. take it. Mine was one of uh, Johnny Tsunami's friends in Hawaii 
had a puka shell necklace, not like the ones of the actual shells, but like the tiny white shells that are all in a string. Uh huh. I had one of those. Oh, nice. Yeah. Remember when we got all got those at PacSun? Yes. The mall. All right. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, Val. What's your guess? I'm going to guess. I I think it's above 40. I'm going to guess. Do I think it's above 50? I'm going to say 50 exactly. (laughs) It's higher, Val. Really? It is not within our range. So (gasps) it is 63. No way. The people, they love it. Wait, so this one's rated higher than like any of the other ones that we No, we watched? had one that was 70, wasn't it? Like Brink was oh, like maybe. 78 or 71 or something. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. 63. Interesting. Okay. Which, you know, I could see people really, really loving this movie. Yeah, it's a fun romp. You get fun to romp. look at cu- Cutie Jet Jackson. Uh, what a cutie. R.I.P. I know. Oh. I know. All right. That's all you, Val. Oh, happily ever after. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Uh, Our next box is almost kissing. Definitely. Mm hmm. There's like an awkward hug. There's like three almost kisses. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, they're dancing and it's really awkward. I mean, this felt more realistic to middle school interactions than a lot of the other movies that we've seen where they're like going on like grown up dates. So in that way, you hate the grown up date. I don't hate you hate them. it. I just hate it. No, no, I don't. I sincerely don't. If anything, I find them entertaining because I I think it's funny when little kids act not little kids, but like when young people <laughs> act like adults. Um, but I think that this one is more authentic, like all the interactions felt more authentic to like middle schoolers. Yeah. Um, okay. Someone who became famous. I have an argument. Johnny walks into his room. You see a shot of his desk. There's a desk lamp there that looks like the Pixar lamp. Someone who became famous. I don't accept Pixar lamp. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pixar I just lamp. don't. <laughs> no. Ugh. We have to have some standards, Allie. If you accept Pixar lamp, I want you to shout me out when the, our bingo card gets posted on Instagram. Okay, but I'm not going to. I just want to know that our fans hear me. Okay. I just want to know that I'm heard. (laughs) Okay. I'll give a, a a men honorable mention without marking it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anytime. You can put a little Pixar lamp on the card. (laughs) Yeah, but that would count as a mark, Allie. No, you could like shadow it. You could do it like transparently. They're all translucent. So that you can still read what it says underneath. <laughs> just just let it go. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a good thing this box is next. Betraying of one's real <laughs> friends or values. Oh, I'm betraying you? You're betraying me and Pixar. <laughs> On behalf of How- me and Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Pixar, go listen to the tournament podcast. They just did a bracket on Pixar. Oh, yeah, I voted and... Uh, None of the movies that I voted for. (laughs) Same, same. Ratatouille takes all and I won't hear any of it from anyone else. Well, to be fair, it wasn't them. They don't. Oh, I know. It's the the voters. The voters. Uh, The voters. Uh, No one betrayed their real friends or values. No one did. In this film. No. Your childhood crush? Oh, I definitely had a crush on Jet Jackson. Oh, yeah. I had a crush on Johnny Tsunami and I now have a crush on his grandpa. (laughs) <laughs> wait you had a crush on johnny tsunami oh my god that hair oh i hate the hair now looking back on it i don't know that he's my type and i would definitely say that like jet jackson is more my type but in this movie i think because he's like the main character i was like oh my god yeah that's so funny yeah lee thompson young his eyes are like so pretty oh my god i know um obviously bad special effects or stunts uh, yeah, every time you would pause the TV at Johnny Tsunami snowboarding or skiing down a hill, it'd be a white dude. So, um, yep, yep. It was pretty, blatant. yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> I was like, they couldn't find a single person of color who could snowboard. Like, I think I, that's what pissed me off the most about this movie. <sighs> it made me yeah. so mad that you could just clearly tell it was not him, even when he was surfing. 
It was clearly yeah. an adult human being. Um, yeah, there was a lot of that. And like for some of the scenes, I kind of got it like the scene where he's basically falling down the hill to try and get help for mm. Sam and Emily. And he's like doing a lot of like literal stunts, you know, because he's crashing and getting yeah. back up and crashing. Like the, I understand they need someone who knows what they are doing for that scene. But like for the scenes where it's just sort of like someone snowboarding, like they couldn't find anybody right. who looked more like him in fact i read uh somewhere i can't remember where i just saw this but he also like when he's learning with sam at the beginning he learned he starts snowboarding funny foot which means um his his left foot is in the back mm -hmm. and his right foot is in the front which by the way is how i snowboard but then the stunt person the person who snowboards for him is snowboarding like the right way with his left foot in front. So it's that blatant where it's like they couldn't even like find someone who's at least snowboards funny foot, uh, uh, to, funny foot. for that consistency. So um, or goofy foot or whatever it is, but it's something like that. But anyway, so, yeah, that was very, very, very obvious. Yeah. One hundred percent. OK, Eric Von Detten, Ryan Merriman, Kimberly J. Brown, Lawrence Brothers or Kirsten Storms, we uh, oh. get to check the box. I totally check forgot she was box. in this movie, so it was an, a pleasant surprise. I also forgot she was in this movie, even though I literally watched it like a few months ago. Nice. <laughs> Which is, I think is also a statement about how blah that character is. And yeah, it's she's a pretty, shame she's great. pretty boring. Yeah, and like Kirsten Storms is better than that. Yeah. They underutilized her for sure. For sure. Uh, musical number? Nope. Nope. Uh, magic. No. Nope. No. I wish there was. Not even science magic. Someone says the title of the movie within yeah, line. Like maybe in the third line. Yeah. Scooby Dude. No, there wasn't really like a problem to solve like that. I no. mean, I guess you could argue it like because he comes up with the competition, but meh. Nah. The heroes create the problem. No. No. Not even close. Uh, lead is a fish out of water. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's about as fishy out of water as it gets besides 13th year. And under wraps. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Val, you know what that means. No bingo this week. No bingo. That's okay. That's okay. We'll get another one soon. We will. Or it'll take like two years. But either way, it'll be exciting. And we'll still be doing it in two years, so we'll be here when it happens. Yeah, you guys heard. Val's kicking me out before five years. So... <laughs> I just said we no, still you, need doing you it. You said you it. hate me. You said you said why am I doing this? I I don't <laughs> want to do this anymore. <sighs> this is what happens when Allie drinks peach blue. <laughs> <laughs> record this podcast. Okay, but I won't do that again. Um, <laughs> I just thought it'd be oh. fun because I knew we were gonna say Johnny Tsunami a lot. Oh, there. No, it's very one. fun. It was a fun idea. So this is the game, right? Mm -hmm. Like the game. All is right. So the drunk. game at the very end. Can you imagine <laughs> if I was like, no, now we're actually going to play a game. Um, <laughs> all right. No, the game throughout, as you heard, was played in the beginning. Um, so I've been taking a tally of how many times we said Johnny Tsunami, Val and I took a drink every time that we did. Um, and so after all of those drinks, whether or not you heard them all, because there is a bit that Val will cut out. Um, mm -hmm. We had. 65 drinks today. Wow. We, Val and I just took 65 shots. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of the commentary. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us this week. Um, we appreciate you being here and listening to us, uh, listening to us chat about nonsense. Follow us on Instagram at Decommentaries. Follow us on our upcoming TikTok at Decommentaries, if it's available. Um, <laughs> give us a five star rating. Uh, tell your friends about us. Word of mouth is huge for us. Mm -hmm. And let us know what you want to hear, what you don't want to hear. Uh, if you want Peach Bellini, go to Trader Joe's and buy it. <laughs> Sponsor us, Trader Joe's. Sponsor us, Trader Joe's. <laughs> Bye, Val. Bye, Al. This podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at the tridentnetwork.com slash decommentaries hyphen pod and on Instagram at decommentaries. D Commentaries is a part of the Trident Network. To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit thetridentnetwork.com.
Disney Channel original movies. Damn it, Allie.